Today I'm going to show you the all-in-one video settings for the DJI Osmo Action 4. This is going to allow you to shoot in every situation and you will always get the best video quality. Let's go! I got a lot of comments on one of my previous videos where I was showing you the very special exposure setting on the Osmo Action 4 and a lot of you were kind of confused as to what I was saying. So I'm making like a dedicated video to cover all the settings of the DJI Osmo Action 4 and I will try to talk slower because you guys also commented that I'm really fast in talking. I mean, you should watch some of my older videos. I barely understand myself so thank you for noting that. So I'm gonna talk about this in two separate branches, two separate scenarios. So one would be where you want video files coming straight out of the camera and ready to be posted and the other one being where you would want to work in post-production. So the settings are a little bit different for each one but whichever way you go you will get the most versatile settings from the camera if you follow along. So let's first talk about the video codec. It's very important to choose the right codec for the right type of setting. Now, I don't know if there was a firmware update with this, but in the beginning, if you wanted to shoot 10-bit video, you have to choose the high efficiency video codec or the HEVC. This is also known as the H.265. The cool thing about this video codec is that it gives you a higher quality for a smaller video file and you can record 10-bit videos on the Osmo Action 4. However, if you want to go with the normal colors and get the videos straight out of the camera ready to be posted, then I would suggest using the H.264, which is the most common video codec and pretty much every device on the planet will be able to play those videos back. Now the next thing is the video resolution. Since this is a small sensor action camera, you should pretty much always go with 4K. Now this does a really true to life 4K video rendering and it would be a shame to shoot with anything lower than that. Except if you're shooting slow motions. Well, in slow motion, higher frame rates, you have to choose a 2.7K video resolution. Anything lower than that, ooh, better not use that. Okay, the next thing is the picture profile. Now this comes hand in hand with sharpness and noise reduction and with that video codec that we just talked about. So if you want to get that straight out of the camera ready to use video file, then choose normal colors. And for the sharpening and noise reduction, you can leave it at default or maybe lower the sharpening to minus one. Now noise reduction, I would leave at zero because this camera does a very good job at noise reducing, but it is a little bit over too sharpened in my taste. So for normal colors, you can use the H.264 and sharpening set to minus one and you get a good looking video straight out of the camera. On the other hand, if you want to do post-production work, then you should definitely choose the D-Log M 10-bit because that's going to give you a little bit higher dynamic range and a lot of latitude for post-production working. Well, a lot would be a little bit overdoing it because it's still an action camera, but you can get so much more dynamic range if you use D-Log M. Of course, for that, you should use the HEVC video codec and set the sharpening and noise reduction to minus two. That's a given. So it's always better to add that in post-production with a more capable software like DaVinci Resolve, for instance, than to just leave the camera to do it for you because, well, you know, it's not as good. So now we finally come to the exposure part of the video. I think for an action camera, it's pretty much necessary to shoot with auto exposure. Now I know this sounds very unprofessional, but if you set the settings the right way, if you set the limits the right way, then the camera is going to do a pretty good job of exposing and stabilizing because this has an electronic stabilizer called Rocksteady. It requires a certain amount of quality in the image to actually work really well. And if you follow the traditional 180 degree shutter rule, well then you're going to end up in trouble. Now I made a video on this topic, you can find it over here or even better, wait until the end of this video and click on the end card which will take you to the video where I talk about 
shutter speed issues. Now, in case you don't know what the 180 degree shutter rule is, well, people typically say you should double the frame rate. So the more official way of explaining it, and very complicated, well, you should reduce the exposure time of each frame by half. So let's say you're shooting with 100 frames per second. That means that every second has the maximum exposure time of one one hundredth of a second. So 100 frames in one second, each one gets one one hundredth of a second. So now to follow the 180 degree shutter rule, you should reduce that time by half. So instead of having one one hundredth of a second shutter speed, you set it to one two hundredths of a second shutter speed. So reducing the time by half. For 24 or 25 frames per second, you should set the shutter speed to be one fiftieth of a second. And this is what's called the cinematic shutter speed. On an action camera, however, yeah, that's not the one you want to have unless the camera is not moving. Okay, so to summarize everything, this is what you need to set on the Osmo Action 4. Choose the HEVC video codec, set your frame rate and resolution to 4K and 25 frames per second for vlogging or 4K to 50 frames per second for action shots. Then use the D-Log M picture profile, set the noise reduction and sharpening to minus two and go into the exposure page where you should set your ISO to be between 100 and 1600 and your shutter speed to be between 1 one hundredths of a second all the way to 8 thousandths of a second. And I would leave the EV value at zero. So these are pretty much the settings that I always use on my Osmo Action 4. I never change anything and I pretty much always get the shot that I want. So anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, hit the like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. And if you wanna stay on the channel, watch one of these two videos. Bye bye.